My life changed, I guess, uh, when I was 15 in 1955, uh, uh, and I biked from the gully to Kerry Kerry, which was a long, long bike ride. So I biked past here um, and would have realized it was a small, tiny settlement. Uh, and it was very much, very little, a, a general store um, and this place here, which sat behind it. So I biked out there and joined the local surf club. Now, if you came out on Friday, which we often did to the surf patrols, you would stop at the store here and buy stores for the weekend. Uh, no one had fridges. And so you would buy cans of baked beans uh, and you'd buy stuff to make stews and things like that. On the, and there was no, no electricity at Kari Kari. So everything was cooked in the surf club. So Glen Eden was our, our watering hole, I guess, on the way to the West Coast. But before then, when I was about 12 and 13, um, I was really crazy about walking in the hills, in the Waitakere Hills. And so with a couple of my mates, as it were, I would catch the Saturday train to Swanson. And as it went through the Glen Eden Station, I would look at the hills, which are all around here, uh, which was farming and, 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 and empty space. But on a big paddock, which is up the top of the hill, just to my right, someone was building an incredible structure. It looked like a big church was being built. Uh, and I remember being fascinated by the structure. Um, it was, I could see it was all beams, big beams, and it didn't seem to get finished for the summer of 1952 and 53, when I'm 12 and 13, as I came out. So I would keep coming past Glen Eden and I'd see that it was gradually getting a little bit more populated, I guess, in the 1950s uh, as they ended and into the 1960s. Well, by the time I was 21, I had uh, started a small business, an advertising business, and by then I'd lived, I was living in Avondale. So I'd started to come creep west. That business uh, really took off uh, in, the, in the 1960s. And in 1968, uh, a very good friend of mine, Roger Donaldson, had gone to live uh, just along the West Coast Road. And he told me that a house that might interest me was on the market. It was owned by a man called Morris Smith, who I didn't have a clue who Morris Smith was. He said, look, Morris Smith is a really interesting guy. He's a New Zealander, he's an architect, and he's built over the last 10 years an incredible house on half an acre up in what is called Fairview Road. Anyway, on a Sunday morning, Roger Donaldson and another guy called Alan Smythe, who was then a lecturer at Auckland University, and me in my Fiat Bambina, trundled up a very bumpy driveway through large bamboo hedges and holy hell there was this house rearing up in front of me. It was in fact a barn. This guy had been building a barn, a living barn. In other words a barn to live in, not for animals. So I saw this house emerge out of this field of weeds, blackberry, gorse, and I went up and knocked on the door. Uh, Morris was still there, and he was leaving for America. He invited me in, and the, the whole sp space was just so attractive to me. It was massive. Beautiful floors um, of matai floors. Uh, the interior was um, cedar and ply, marine, marine ply, and I loved it, and I thought I'd never owned a house before, 
but and I thought I think I could live in this house and so I asked him uh, how much he wanted for it and he said I actually want ten thousand dollars and I said to him my god every house in the street is only four thousand dollars how can you want ten thousand dollars for this he said well it's got half an acre I know it's in very bad condition but it's a very good house and I thought this is a very very good house and and he said um, if you want the house this is your last chance because I'm going away tomorrow and I'll continue to rent it um, and I can rent it for six dollars a week and I went well I could rent it I suppose but I was like obsessed with it and he said and I need $25 deposit now and I thought okay I'll give him $25 deposit so I, I went to my car and the firm's checkbook was there and I wrote him a check for $25. I brought Barbara, who I would later marry, to the house and she liked it and she thought it was pretty good and I thought if she likes it then I'll marry her. 